Hi Emilio, hi Carsten. Thanks for taking a few moments to join me. I'm excited to hear about the latest news in silicon carbide. Certainly. So with Simicron Danfoss, of course, we're working with the top suppliers of silicon carbide chips. Um, we want to make sure that we're especially working with people focused all the way down to the crystal level so they have full control over their chip supply chain. Um, we've come out with Generation 3 in the past and we're coming out with Generation 4 this year. Of course, there's um, little features that each one has along the way. And I think Motor Drives has the latest feature with uh, Gen 4. Okay, maybe before we go to motor drives, I wanted to come back to you on this difference between silicon and silicon carbide in terms of the processing time of the of the ingots or the wafers that we need for that. Certainly. Tell us a bit about that, because I guess there is some uh, difficulties there if you're not careful. Right, so I mean, a lot of it comes down to cost. When you look at the cost of silicon and the cost of silicon carbide, a lot of it comes down to that crystal, that first ingot that you make of pure silicon or pure silicon carbide. With silicon in the past, you could do this long draw based on a, um, a small um, key of, of silicon. Do a long draw, have a huge ingot of silicon that's some meters long. It happens in a few hours, it's very quick. With silicon carbide, there's a different process where they have to deposit the silicon carbide onto an ingot. It takes days and it takes lots of energy. So the crystal itself ends up being a very important factor in the overall chip supply chain process. And that's why we we'll want to work with people who focus on that crystal process. Okay, thank you. I guess we'll come back to the cost elements of that in a minute, but um, Carsten, motor drives, um, silicon carbide wasn't always at the forefront for those guys. What's changed? Well, the the drive guys, the drive manufacturers have realized that there are certain benefits of silicon carbide that uh, allows them to make better drives. Better means you can make them more efficient. So that helps definitely when you think about the decarbonization efforts or the energy consumption reduction efforts that the industry is driving right now, right? And you can also build smaller drives with that by the lower conduction and switching losses. You have less heat generation, means your cooling can come down. And then the simulation, we have shown that uh, on the same switching conditions, same load conditions, you can shrink your heatsink for 66%. And the heatsink is quite some part in the drive, so you can shrink the whole drive. That's a benefit for the customer in the end. And um, you could also take a given frame of a drive and swap from silicon to silicon carbide, and by that, increase the power for one frame in the same mechanical frame. So there's plenty of options that you have when you get, go from silicon to silicon carbide and uh, drives manufacturers see that and try to use it, utilize it more and more. Okay, um, and, but what about the cost element of that? Are they willing to pay the price for silicon carbide? That is a very interesting question. Um, you don't have to do the, you can't do the mistake and look just at the module. So if you look just at the module price, then as Emilio also explained before, it's probably never gonna, gonna come down to the level of a silicon module, but you have to widen your view and look at the total drive, as I explained, it can be smaller or even the application. So if you think of a, about a pump or fan application, these things run 24 seven and mostly in the partial load range. And that's where silicon carbide is really, um, it can really bring you a benefit in terms of efficiency. And also there we made a simulation um, with a pump that's running over a year over a certain load profile. Comparing their silicon and silicon carbide has shown that the losses go down by 55%. And if you turn that back into money, it would take roughly a year to get the investment back. And now thinking about the drives are made for 10 years operation, even longer sometimes, one year is nothing. Okay. So it's definitely coming back. Well, it's great to hear that people start to get in the really looking at the holistic picture for energy there. You have to do that with silicon carbide, but if you do it, it works out. Okay, great. Um, Emilio, a similar story from an EV perspective, maybe also would be interested to hear about the packages that are available as well. Certainly. So uh, with EV charging, silicon carbide has been used for some years now. Um, we're really looking at the heat sink, at the isolation transformer, trying to get those as small as possible and trying to reduce the cost as much as possible. And silicon carbide comes in by increasing the switching frequency so you can reduce that transformer in size. And also you have a very efficient type of power module I'll say the Semitop E1 and E2 are the, the high runners for silicon carbide and EV charging. Of course, we also have the Semitrans 3 type package, the 62 millimeter module, um, which we've had silicon carbide in that for quite some time. The biggest advantages of these modules is a low inductance design. And with the 
semi top, for example, we also have a base plateless design. Uh, it's got very good contact with the heat sink, really getting the heat out as much as possible. So what little heat there is in silicon carbide, pulling it out easier. Carsten, one last question from a technical perspective. Generation three, generation four silicon carbide, anything new there? Yes, definitely. Um, when we talk about drives, one of the most important thing is that the chip has to withstand a certain a short circuit for a, for a certain time, otherwise you can't switch off. And the Gen 3 was not able of withstanding short circuits, but the new, the new Gen 4 is. So we talk about a two microsecond time here, and that you can switch off your short circuit and your drive is protected. So a really mandatory requirement from the drive's world is now fulfilled with the new chips. Okay, so that what was in the past the showstopper is now gone. So yes, definitely. Exciting. You cool. can handle it now. Absolutely, good. Um, Emilio, from an EV perspective, does it also do anything for you? Certainly, for EV charging, um, typically in the past, the Generation 3, it hasn't had this short circuit capability. People have still been able to make it work, but now with the Gen 4 having two microseconds time to turn off in a short circuit condition, it's only helpful. It's an added feature, so the driver has a little bit of time to really turn the device off before getting damaged. Okay, great. Emilio, thanks for your time. Carsten, thanks for your time and exciting update.